Broadcasting from Baltimore, Maryland, this is 5 by 3 Radio, where strength is for everyone. I'm your host, Emily Sokolinski, owner of 5 by 3 Training, a strength and conditioning gym in Baltimore, along with my co-host, Rebecca Fishburn, founder of Cornerstone Strength Maryland. Each week, Rebecca and I will discuss the ins and outs of strength training, why there is a no one size fits all approach, and why strength is so important in our daily lives. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now, on with the show. Hello, hello. You're like dressed up. You're fancy today. Oh my God, no, I'm not. This is like my, this is what I wear to go to bed. You're not wearing an I hate people and you guys suck shirt. (laughs) No, I'm in my pajamas. (laughs) Hi everybody and welcome back to another 5x3 radio podcast. Um, We are here this morning, sorry, morning, afternoon, what (laughs) What day This day. This we day, this day. <laughs> we are here today, and uh, I think the um, the last I could, I could remember I was talking to somebody recently, and I was like, "Yeah, our last podcast was on crap. What was it on?" <laughs> but it was on sometime time, in twenty twenty two. It was on time constraint. <laughs> it was on training and time constraints, and um, it was a really nice, quick podcast too. I didn't realize how quick it was, but um, and we were talking about that just at our camp this past weekend about That's you know sweet. Yeah. training and sometimes how. How a program, you know, don't try to shove a program into like your, you know, your life. If your life doesn't really allow for that program to be right. part of your life, right? So um, I hope um, those of you who got a chance to listen to that um, recently um, enjoyed it and maybe have some thoughts about it. And we'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. So definitely always feel free to contact us. Today, we thought we'd talk about um, a subject, you know, briefly, but uh, one that Rebecca and I get asked all the time. And that is, when do I wear X? Or when should I put on X? Or why should I wear a, and fill in the blank. And what we're talking about are equipment, equipment, exactly. Shoes, belts, wrist wraps, knee sleeves, knee wraps. Um, We're not talking about squat suits. We're not talking about deadlift suits. We're not talking about, (laughs) you know, slingshots. Uh, You know, we're not, we're not a West Side Barbell, uh, you know, equipped uh, lifters. We're talking about just very general equipment that most people, once they get involved in strength training, once they're they're doing a lot of barbell training, might need. Um, Or, um, and it's not for everybody. I mean, not everybody's going to need this equipment, but there are certain pieces that definitely we want to have early on and then maybe acquire later. So um, what do you think, Rebecca? What do you think is the number one piece of equipment somebody should have when they begin their barbell training, their strength training? Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I think it's kind of plain shoes, well, right? Shoes, right. right. Your lifters. Exactly. Your lifters. Right. And, and I was thinking about this when you were talking about it because I think it's almost – I mean, at five by three, it's almost not even a question Mm -hmm. of whether you're going to have lifting shoes or not, because you've got sort of a library of lifting shoes. Yeah, we're like a bowling alley. Yeah, (laughs) it's like a bowling alley. Exactly. We did just go bowling. It's exactly like they're renters. They're rentals. Except you don't have to pay for the rentals. We just you know give them to you. And and that's just sort of standard at five Mm -hmm. by three. So the idea of when do I buy lifters really at five by three, I think a lot of times comes down to. When do I think I'm going to get into a situation where I want to lift at the same time that somebody else who borrows exactly. the same <laughs> wants to lift? Exactly. Right? So it kind of comes down yep. to a, like a, a practical, yep. um, you know, decision about just accessibility of equipment yes. that yes. you take for granted. Yes. Um, and at the, um, you know, at the, the gym where I work, there's, it's not the same, um, you know, lifting environment. Mm-hmm. It's sort of, you know, it's a racquetball club. There's group fitness classes. There's lots of people coming in in um, what I grew up calling sneakers, but with what everybody down here below the Mason Dixon line calls tennis shoes, shoes or whatever right. you call them down here in Maryland. Um, so like, I get a lot of people who start out in sneakers and, um, running shoes in particular are going to have 
a lot of cushioning, a lot of squish. Mm -hmm. They're going to not mm -hmm. really be ideal for a heavy squat. For people who are just getting started or even almost even I'd say like flirting with the mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. of barbell training, you know, they make do with those sorts of shoes for a period of time. And, you know, usually a couple of weeks in, they'll they'll get to a point where the, the bar weight is heavy enough. They've invested enough um into the into the process they've maybe envisioned themselves right. as a barbell right. lifter a little bit more and they'll start to ask about that um you know how how come i'm not able to stay solid in my foot why do i keep getting tipped forward in my toes well mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. talk about your shoes mm -hmm. um and so that I think would be the, the first thing. And, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, but like I have actually had two people that I've had to talk to where even having sneakers or tennis shoes is an upgrade from what they showed up in. Gotcha. Like I have a person who showed up one time and sort of like, I guess they're, I guess they're semi-athletic shoes, but there's no back to them. Mm. And um, someone else that um, often trains in Crocs without the backs pulled up. <laughs> and so, I mean, if you're talking about a certain kind of exercise, that's probably okay. But when you're trying to do a barbell squat and you unrack the bar and you try and step backwards mm -hmm. with a heavy weight on your back and you have a shoe on that doesn't have a back to it, that's a safety hazard. Yeah. So yeah. At, yeah. The, at the you would think that lifters would be the first recommendation, but there are actually even situations where, you know, shoes with backs are the right. right. first recommendation. You can squat in a pair of flip-flops. We just don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I I did when I, you know, when I hurt my foot, I dropped a glass on because my Because you on my were foot. wearing flip-flops when you were squatting? Because <laughs> I was, no, because I was at home and on my, the glass, I knocked the glass off the table and it broke and, <laughs> and cut my foot. So I couldn't wear my shoes because I was trying to heal this wound, but I needed oh, gotcha. to squat. But I needed so you to squat. were like intentionally wearing them because you I was put pressure on a wound or I something. was intentionally wearing flip-flops because what are you going to do? Not train? Well, I mean, at that point, would you not just like squat barefoot? Like, no, would that be, no. Would be actually having that shoe, um, I had a little bit of a lift then, right? But I, I would rather be in a flip-flop than be barefoot on a on the floor. Because God knows what I'm going to step on when I'm there, right? So I need to have my foot protected. Yeah, I just like, I'm, I'm watching feet like come just right straight out so, of the shoe. So, you know, I think, um, I mean, squatting with flip-flops, not ideal. I wouldn't do it all the time, but I did it because it could. Not recommended. Was, not recommended, <laughs> but what are you going to do? Not train. But but deadlifting <laughs> a pair of flip-flops because some, because, you know, oftentimes we'll take maybe people out of their shoes, out of their lifters for the deadlift to get them into a better pulling position. But yeah, we always put people in a pair of shoes right away and we do have a wonderful shoe collection um, that we utilize because I can fix a lot of problems with just putting a pair of shoes on somebody then trying to spend some time with them in a pair of sneakers or any other kind of shoe. And then the minute we put a pair of lifters on, that ankle mobility is fixed, this is fixed, they're not soup, they're not pronating anymore, whatever it is, they can be fixed immediately with a, with a, with a shoe. And I remember Matt Gary saying that, um, Susie Hartwood Gary's, uh, husband matt who's a famous power lifter and, and coach and him saying we can fix a lot of people in a pair of shoes right away so put a pair of shoes on if you can mm -hmm. you have either a half an inch or three quarter of an inch heel depending on you know what you need most people don't need a three quarter inch all they need is a half inch a little bit of a heel right um some people they'll buy shoes that have a three quarter inch they're great looking shoes but they might put you too far forward in your toes so you have to be very mindful of that if you do end up buying a pair of shoes like that so a half an inch heel probably is ideal for most people yeah as rebecca said you've got a nice flat surface you're never going to wear these shoes outside of the gym they're never going to wear out so you never have to worry about your your own personal gait how you walk and you wear out the outside of your shoe or you wear out the inside of your shoe or you walk on your toes or you walk on your heels it's a flat surface the entire time and you got a supported heel as well. So it's just in general a good shoe to wear. You would not go to a ballet class without your ballet slippers. You would not go to a soccer game without your cleats. You would not, right? You wouldn't go to a basketball game without your, without your so, kit. Same thing, right? If you're gonna if you're going to lift, if you're gonna strength train and you're gonna get serious about it, and you're going to go into a, a gym and you're gonna put on, you know, a bar on your back or, and you're legit, legitimately wanting to get stronger, you need to have a good shoe that's going to provide you with a good amount of support. Yeah. Sure, plenty of people can wear Vans or Chucks. I'll try to tell people, 
buy a pair of Vans, buy a pair of Chucks, they're a little cheaper. Don't wear them anywhere else. Like just use them for your lifting again, because if you wear them around, you're gonna wear them out. And then, you know, it's like squatting on a, in a pair of sneakers. It's, you know, you're rocking on the bed. Um, but I do have a young woman who prefers to wear her Noble shoes that are a little flatter. Just causes the, the she's got a little bit of, um, she's got a, a back issue. So wearing a heeled shoe just puts her in a little weird, stranger position, a different position. That's fine. She squats beautifully. It doesn't matter. It's a flat shoe. It's a good shoe. Um, and it gives her enough support and she's not really training with that, that much weight just yet. So maybe, you know, as she, as it gets, you know, she gets stronger as the weight goes on, we might want to change the shoes or as her back gets better. But for right now, she's fine where it is. Um, mm -hmm. I found out just the other day as I decided to keep my CrossFit shoes on that I wear for deadlifting to wear while I was doing the safety bar squat. I felt a hell of a lot better in those shoes than in my lifters. But the CrossFit shoes I'm wearing still have a supported heel. It's a really nice heel. Um, it's flat, but you know, it's not like super, super flat. Better for me to, for deadlifts than my lifters. Great for the safety bar squat. Wouldn't wear when I, when I barbell squat though, with the, with the, you know, doing my low bar squat, I wear, I'd wear, I would wear my lifters, but sometimes trying to figure out like a good shoe, just never a tennis shoe. I think a sneaker, you know, something squishy like that would definitely be kind of not optimal, but there are plenty yeah. of other flat shoes that are not lifters that you could certainly, you know, try to wear. But in general, as you were saying, a, a good lifting shoe is just kind of, is really Something that doesn't have a lot of cushioning right. that's going to allow right. force transfer exactly. without a lot of because wiggle. Side the whole to point, side yeah, your whole point is you're trying to get stronger, and this is yeah. a sport. It is a sport, right? There's we're not we're even though they're the power lifts, so we're not necessarily training power lifters. Power. There are people who power lift, and that is a sport. And in that sport, yeah, they have shoes that they wear. It's interesting when you talk about like you wouldn't show up to your ballet class without your ballet slippers, right? right. Like. I think, um, at least for a lot of the people that I'm working with, like I give them a little time at, um, sure. in a non lifting gym setting to kind of wrap their mind around, right. am I going to make this investment? But right. I, I mean, it's making me wonder, like, why, why do people even need that time? You know, because if they were going to get started with a running program, people wouldn't, I don't think people would have the same, oh, I don't want to spend a lot of money on, on it kind of shoes. attitude yeah, exactly. that, I, that I encounter yeah. with lifting. Like I've got these sneakers, why can't I just wear them for the, the That's work? Good. The and I like that. I have a young man who just started with us yesterday and he came in and I said, okay what you know remind me what size are you he gave me a size he says i ordered my shoes already nice he came in on friday met with me we scheduled him with craig he came in yesterday he'd already he's already ordered his shoes he's making a commitment yeah he signed up for a year-long membership he this is something he's never done before but it's like i'm going to invest in this i'm going to do it mm -hmm. right yeah. And well, and I think that kind of comes down to the, whatever I, I said this already, but the difference between the two gyms where yours is specifically a strength gym. Right. Whereas if you're working um, sometimes in an environment that's more um, ambiguous, mm -hmm. like it could be a swim club, it mm -hmm. could be a racquetball club, it could be, a, you know, like what kind of shoes do I need isn't necessarily right. clear. And yeah, whatever. Yeah. We had it's a um, different. It's a different population. I want to. Uh, I want definitely want to move on from the shoes, but one yeah. last story. So we had our our camp this past weekend, and there was a night, a couple that came, and when they came in, they they you know they walked in, they were wearing gym, they were wearing you know, you know pants and comfortable shoes, and they just both had sneakers on. So I said to them, "You guys have um, lifters because they didn't bring any gym bags." No, we you know we train in our sneakers. I said, "Okay, I'm gonna get you a pair of shoes. What size are you?" And they're kind of looking at me like, "Okay, what's happening here?" Not quite sure. <laughs> not quite sure why I'm asking for that. So I give them a pair of shoes, and uh, the wife is kind of. She can see she's there's a little bit of a hesitancy, like I don't know what's going on here, and and you know she's very adamant that she's doing this just for health purposes. You know she's not interested in, in adding weight to the bar. She just wants to make sure her technique is good. She doesn't want to hurt herself. You know, I was like, that's absolutely. I'm not trying to push you to add weight. I'm not push. You're here for technique. That's what we're. That's what the camp is for, right? So we, she gets her shoes on and, you know, we start, we, you know, we get her under the bar as she's squatting and I'm having her tell her to turn her toes out and do this. And she's just like, this is not what I've been doing and this and that, but she's embracing all of it. It's not that she's, she's, you know, she's pushing back on me. She's embracing it. She's, and slowly you see her squat transform from what it was to what, it, you know, what it is at the end. Was it perfect? No, but was it completely different than what she had started with? Absolutely. 
Then the bench happens. Then her deadlift happens. She's never deadlifted before because they only have a 45 pound bar at home and she's got no uh, bumpers. Right. Uh -huh. So she's putting little 10 pound plates on the floor, right? Oh, right, jeez, yeah. Put the bumpers on, she, she deadlifts 90 pounds. Never done it before. And that was easy. She's got so much more in her. So her husband emails me today and thanks me for the, the camp and then says, I have tried very unsuccessfully to get her to really invest in, <laughs> in lifting and I have not been able to do it. Now she wants bumpers. <laughs> shoes. <laughs> she wants. Well, I mean, she's like, she's like, she's like, she's like, and she wants a squat bench and deadlift. Like she has. Yeah. You could see when the time she started. When she started there, it was like I'm very like I just want to have my technique. And all of a sudden, she's benching five more, five less pounds than what she squatted. And I said to her, I said, uh -huh. now you know you have a lot more in you because you just benched five pounds less than what you squatted. And she's like, mm -hmm. and then she deadlifts ninety. Never deadlift. Now she wants to do it all, and she wants yeah. the shoes, and she wants the bumpers. And she once says, he says, I can't believe what you did. It was like, we gave her this, we gave her the, uh, we allowed the her to say, yeah, we allowed her to say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You yeah. don't have to, but I'm going to show you this. We're going to show you this. And then you decide what you want. And at the end of the seminar, she was just like, that was it. She was real quiet. So you didn't know, mm -hmm. but she was excited. Yeah. Well, and I mean, also like you opened her eyes to a different yeah. world and yeah. like, if she's like, I think what you're saying is they're lifting at home, right? Yes. Like yes. if you're lifting even at, um, like a, a general gym, a lot of times they will have a variety of equipment and you'll be more, um, aware or attuned to what all is available exactly. out there. Exactly. Um, as opposed to just you know, the stuff that somebody buys yeah. for their home gym is going to be more limited and, and yeah, you yeah. get that limited equipment coupled with what somebody's misperceptions or stereotypes of what lifting is, right? Like, I'm, I don't want to put those shoes on because yes. then I'm going to end up looking like, uh, uh, you're going to make me do a lot more Ronnie than, I want, than what I want to do. Yeah. Well, you're also going to yeah. make me do a lot more than what I want to do. And I don't want to get that serious. And now right. she's like, I'm serious. <laughs> now, now she's sort of seen that there is a barbell world out there mm -hmm. that she fits right into that she didn't even know was there. <laughs> and it was just, I love, I love having emails. I love getting emails like that. I like getting that really has like, I've tried to talk her into doing this. <laughs> How did you do that? How did you? Yeah. Now he's got to go buy all that extra equipment though. He's so like, maybe yeah. he's going to send you another. <laughs> But I love having another him like he came like, over, he's came over, he's like watching her deadlift and you, there's, there's in the, you know, you see him like staring at her like, is this my wife? Is this my <laughs> wife? Um, so that was, so, so there's yeah. somebody who came in, no shoes, put her in a pair of shoes. Now she wants a pair of shoes because she realizes what she's actually capable okay, of doing. Okay, so shoes, shoes number one. are the piece of gateway equipment yes. to the wider world yes. of bars. So what's the second piece? The belt. Okay. I would have to say the belt. The belt's probably the second piece because um, and people always ask me, you know, early on, when should I, when do I need to put a belt on? When do I need a belt? And we have a number of soft belts, right? We have a number of Velcro belts that you can buy on Amazon, 21 bucks. Yeah. 20, um, 25. I yeah. love Harbinger, H-A-R-B-I-N-G-R, -R, that brand, that brand specifically is just a nice, solid quality belt. And you could wear that for a, a long time. Once though, you've started to wear the belt, um, and you have a soft belt, then obviously you want to start looking for a leather belt. But when do you put them on? When do you need the belt first? The two main lifts that I find people need the belt on, uh, you know, maybe a month into their training, maybe a little earlier if they're a little smaller, you know, older, um, or if they're female, um, and they're um, perhaps underweight, and so mm -hmm. the lifts are getting a little bit heavier. Pr squat and press. Squats probably the first one, and then the press, right? Um, those are the two main, those are the two lifts. And it's again, it's usually my older women um, and my younger women who are underweight, who are you know smaller, um, who just need more support because yeah, you know, they're they're strong where they are, but then that press gets heavy, and that squat can start to get you know fairly heavy too, and they're still learning the movement, so. That, that, that extra support allows them to then figure out exactly what the tension is. And that's kind of key, tightness. I think a belt, why I like to put the belt on for people, um, it's not so much that they're losing, that they can't, that they're squatting high, because oftentimes I'll tell people, well, it's usually when you start to squat high, you're not, usually it's when they're not holding tension at the bottom enough and you can see it's getting harder for them to come up. Mm -hmm. um, and holding, and they're, and they're holding the breath. They're doing the breathing. They're doing the valsava, you know, but 
it's still just not enough. That belt, that little extra support, bit of support, all of a sudden is a very nice tactile cue to tell somebody, that's how much tighter I need to be. So when they don't have the belt on, they're trying to replicate what that feels like. Then all of a sudden I see people taking a much bigger breath, learning where to hold it, learning where the breathing really is. Um, and then that allows them when the, they put the belt on, they can use that breathing out to help, you know, in, reinforce that. Uh, that so that's interesting because I guess I would have, I would have said the two lifts where I see people needing it most are squat and deadlift. Deadlift, never the deadlift. But as you're talking about the, you're describing the client as um, like maybe an underweight female, I could really see where that belt would be helpful on press. And um, I think in large part because women often tend to have sort of like, especially um, it seems like, especially women who have had children have sort of like an anterior pelvic tilt, right? Mm -hmm. So like a lot of arc to the low back Mm -hmm. um and the belt i think would help to just kind of like you're saying tactile cue remind them to keep that locked in Mm -hmm. keep everything like that solid canister as opposed to the bar is getting heavy as i'm pressing it overhead my ribs are going to flare my pelvis is going to tilt forward and i'm going to arc back and feel it in the back right so yeah the belt reminds you not to do that with your spine while you're pushing the, the weight overhead exactly or or when you're squatting down right because the tendency is women are very flexible and we can stick our you know butts out pretty easily so when we you know we move hips back sometimes women will you know arch more they'll hyperextend. Mm-hmm. you don't see that with guys you very rarely see that with guys and you don't see that with my bigger women but you definitely see that with my smaller more flexible women yeah. right the yeah. rib the ribs will flare which sends the butt back and that happens typically either when they're going down or when they're coming up so learning how to brace Right? We, teach the, we teach the bracing, we do the, the, the drill with pushing against the wall or pushing the rack. You know, we do the drill at, their, at our camp, learning how to like what, it, what that feeling, that breathing really feels like. But sometimes that's just not enough. So when you put the belt on, all of a sudden it's like, oh crap, that's how tight I have to be? Yeah, I can't get into your body to tell you how tight you need to be where the breathing is. I can show you, I can hit my, hit my stomach, you know, make, make it hollow, make it, make it solid. But I like eventually, I like eventually with the squat and with the press, it does help tremendously for them to all of a sudden feel like there's tension in my body. Now I get it. And later on, even from some of my women who are not, you know, not, not underweight, but who are the weight where the press is getting heavy, like it's getting into the eighties. That's a pretty nice high weight for, you know, for a female, the belt helps tremendously. I put the belt on for one of my women and her press soared. It was like, it was, it was so much easier squat too. We got to a certain weight for the squat. She refused to squat at this weight, <laughs> like was doing singles. Cause she didn't commit. She didn't commit. She couldn't commit to the, to a triple because she just didn't feel like she had it. It was so nerve wracking. I put a soft belt on her one, two, three, like three beautiful reps. And now she's 10, she's squatting 10 pounds more than she was before that. Mm-hmm. It was like, how did I do that? I was like, you already had that in you. <laughs> It just, that little bit, that little bit of, of extra, you know, of extra uh, tension and you really feeling having something to push against helped you, your body realize I am in position. I can stay in position. I'm taking the breath. I'm doing everything right. Now I'm just a little, you know, I have a little bit more tightness. I'm a little firmer. I'm a little, I trust my body a little bit more. So I so, definitely the squat and also the press. Yeah. So like at your gym, you have the soft belts Mm -hmm. and what's nice about those is they're Velcro. And so they can be easily adjusted for different people, different sizes. Yeah. I have the gym owner, especially a gym owner who runs a strong woman competition, because the soft belt is nice for a lot of the strong woman events in a way that a hard belt is not. It makes a lot of sense for you to have soft belts. If you're somebody who's lifting at home, you've got a home gym and you're going to buy hopefully one belt. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, whatever it's like, like the way you're describing the soft belt 
use in your gym is almost maybe like training wheels. Like it's like a training yes. belt, like try Absolutely. it out, see how much this improves yep. Yep. your technique, your ability to maintain tension while you're yep. doing this lift. Now think about buying your own hard belt. Mm-hmm. What hard, you know, and I know you've lent your own belt to a lot of members mm-hmm. in the past, if they're, you know, the right size and it fits them and, and people are friendly and, and generous with letting very, others very. borrow and try out their belts. Um, if they're not currently using them or whatever. So just similar to the shoes, it's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. a library of equipment. Mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm. test it out, make a yep. decision about yep. um, what's going to be right for you. If you don't have that, would you recommend that a person buy a soft belt first or just go right ahead to um, a leather belt? So Diego, that's a good question because actually I did, I told somebody the other day about getting a soft belt. Diego said, no, 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 just go ahead and buy a belt. Go for the leather belt. Just get it now. Um, I personally like having both. I like the soft belt and the leather belt because sometimes I don't need my leather belt. I don't want to have to worry about putting that thing on. The soft belt gives me enough support, especially if it's a, if it's a lighter weight, but you know, I want to just do it fast and maybe my mm-hmm. back is feeling kind of funky that day or something. Um, I don't need to wear the, the, the leather belt, but I think for someone who just, who needs to get a belt now getting a leather belt, if you can get the leather belt and it comes in on time buy buy that. I don't think you need to, maybe, maybe you can buy a soft belt down the road, but I think Diego's right. I think just go ahead and invest in one, in one now. That's, yeah. That's generally the way I've done it too. Like if yeah. I get a person and again, it's a different environment. So if I get a person who's gotten to a point where they're like, I think I, I think I need my own belt and the yeah. gym does have some belts that you can borrow, but yeah. they're all like those dumb ones that are fat yeah. in the back and skinny yeah. in the middle exactly. and they're weird sizes and whatever. So, I mean, that's another thing that kind of, if, if I get a person who's to the point where they want to buy a belt in that environment, as opposed to one of my online clients, online clients generally show up with their, right. their shoes, their belt, right. their right. whatever Everything. other equipment, right. they've already got that. Um, but somebody who's just starting out, I think all of those individuals just starting out and maybe testing out that idea have gone right to a leather belt. And they always sort of are curious, like, well, should I get a four inch? Should I get a three inch? Should I get the lever? Should I get the double yeah, prong? Exactly. Prong? So let's talk and about so that. What do you advise there? Let's talk about that. Double prong, do not buy. Do not pain buy. Pain in the ass. Do not buy a double prong belt. It's a pain in the ass. It it just it does. I don't even know why it's been made. It's just ridiculous. We you know just like it, that that doesn't make it doesn't sense. Doesn't make sense. Either, right? Doesn't make sense. Like to me, I feel like it, the belt is fitting snugly. It's kind of difficult to get the one prong in and you do that and you're like, Oh, thank God I got it in. Oh shit. Now I got to do it again. Second time with this. Also, other one. You're trying to get the belt off right at the end of your, at the end of your uh, set, you're like, I got to, let me get this fucking thing off me because it hurts. And then you're trying to, you know, you got to get two prongs out. No, don't do it. Emily, there was one time where I was like so exhausted at the end of one of my squats or something. And I was trying to get my belt off and I couldn't get it off. And I like, I almost panicked because exactly. I couldn't get it off. I have people who I'd pan- like, I just like stand there and be like, okay, calm down. I have calm to down. teach people. It'll be okay. I, I teach It'll come people. off. I teach people how to get their, how to put their belt on and how to get it off. And the one thing I say when they, when they're having a hard time getting it off, don't panic. Breathe. Yeah. Because if you panic, it, worse. it makes it worse. So double prong belt, do not get. Um, well, and, and like even say, Sadie will sit there. She'll just sit there and like, uh, she'll do her first set of squat, sits there with the belt on yeah. and like scrolls through TikTok and stuff. I'm like, why, why are you just, she's like, I can't even bother if with your taking belt, it off. Yeah. Well, if, belt, on. if your belt is on and you're talking to somebody and walking around the gym and it's still on, it's not tight enough. Yeah. Well, I, so, I checked hers though. Care, it's it's tight. tight. She's just yeah. tight. She's just tiny. It's just, just a pip squeak it's just, and she's stubborn and she doesn't want to deal with it. We put her off. put her up to the side. We don't mm-hmm. put her to the side. But most of us, if we're walking around having a conversation and laughing it up with people, yeah. with dogs in the gym and we still have our belt on, it's not tight enough. And I can stick if I can stick my hand through your back and through the belt and drag you around the gym. Down down the yes. back, not through it. <laughs> well, down yeah, down the back and drag you around, it's not tight enough. And I'm gonna make you make that thing tighter. So um no to double prongs. Um, what do you say about a lever belt? See, lever belts. I have a lever belt. I love my lever belt. It's a four inch. And we'll talk about that too. It's, it's a four inch. Um, I wear it for squatting. I wear it for 
pressing. I don't wear it for deadlifts. I have a three inch for my deadlift belt. And some people will say they have two belts. They have a four mm -hmm. inch belt for, you know, a squatting or a pressing and a three inch belt for deadlifting because unless you're Kelly with a nice long torso, the four inch belt doesn't feel very good when you bend over to deadlift. She wears a four inch belt and she has a lever belt. Um, lever belts, I want to say are fine. They're paying the butt too. We try to avoid getting people to buy lever belts um, because they just are kind of a, an annoyance because, you know, you gain weight, you lose weight, you got to unscrew it with a screwdriver and you're messing with it for like 20 minutes trying to, you know, figure out where the hole is. It, it's just, it can, it's a, it's a pain. Whereas a nice, you know, one prong, single prong belt, all single you have prong to belt. do is just buckle it differently. Easy. So Diego says, yeah. he, you know, and then I have Charlie, one of my members going, What's wrong with you? Because he's like, he's got a, uh, a lever belt. He goes, you're always in the no lever belt, you know, camp. And I said, because Charlie, it sucks. I love my belt. I'm never going to give my belt up, but it's still a pain in the ass. I have, mm -hmm. I've, I've clipped myself. I pinched myself before my skin trying to screw that thing. It's a pain in the ass, but I do love it. It's a three, it's yeah. a four inch. I kind of am, am attached to it. So I, you know, it's mine, but I do so not I recommend people buy it. Yeah, it's sort of like the way I'm sort of thinking of it as you're talking about it. It's like the soft belt is is like the training belt. Yes. And then your your first belt, right? My first belt, right? Mm -hmm. Probably a three inch mm -hmm. and you know, like in an ideal scenario, three inch belt and single prong, right. three inch belt, just because that's going to be the most versatile. Like if you're just getting started and you want to spend your money wisely and you may not want to get into lifting to the point where you've got equipment specialized inch. for each yes. lift, yes. right? The three inch belt is going to be for most people, the most versatile, unless exactly. you're extremely short torso. And yes. then that might yes. be a little yes. wide. <laughs> so, and that's a thing. It's like, I have a three inch and I have no torso and I wear my four inch for pressing and, and squatting. And it does, it's uncomfortable. I mean, it, it keeps me tight. I, I, it doesn't bother me when I'm lifting as long as it's, you know, sized correctly. And I am not being stubborn and refuse to take it out when I need to. <laughs> um, it's, it does go over my ribs, right? It's, it's a four inch and I have no torso. So I should be wearing a three inch when I'm squatting, but I'm just so used to that four inch. It's, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm hooked to it. I've tried both. I prefer my four inch. However, I cannot deadlift in that thing. And I will not, I will deadlift in my three inch belt, but rarely, like I'll go back and forth with, with the belt, without the belt. And that's, and that's comes to like, when I put people in the belt for deadlift, that's very individual and that's very individual for the person. Um, unless they, unless they have a back issue and we're trying to keep that back nice and happy. And even if they, even if they do, I have a client who's, who's coming back from having a little bit of a back tweak and he's not wearing a belt right now. He's doing his deadlifts beltless. He's really locking in on, on his technique and his position, and it's so much better. He doesn't need the belt. He doesn't. He doesn't wear it. Um, I can deadlift without my belt these days. Back's just locked into place. I don't need it. It's very individual. Some people like having it. It yeah. works for them. Other people, it's too uncomfortable. They're constantly thinking about it. They'd rather not wear it until maybe they have to. Um, and well, when they have to, it's the weight's pretty heavy by that point for them. You know. Yeah. And I think w whatever the lift is, there's like a learning curve with the yes. belt when you first yes. put it on, like, um, and it seems to be steeper for a lot of people with mm -hmm. deadlift. And I don't know if why that is like, um, I, I find a lot of times people have difficulty doing the exact same movement depending on how they are oriented towards gravity or towards the floor or whatever. And there's right. something about the deadlift um, where a lot of times people just have a hard time the first time, first couple of times they're doing that with the belt on figuring out, okay, wait, I used to know how to get my, my abs tight. I used to know how to get braced and get set up. And right. like the belt kind of disrupts the communication that happens between those yes. muscles. Um, so there's, I think a learning curve with all the lifts, it seems to be steeper for, for a lot of people there with the, Deadlift. Especially because you're, 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 fold, you're, fold, you're folded over, right? And so yeah, now the sensation you, is the different. The sensation is very like, different. I'm getting squished. There's also, my lunch coming back to visit me. Also, again, <laughs> smaller people are going to probably have an easier time with the belt and the deadlift than bigger people. Just, just in general. You know, but even because, you know, you put that belt on, it's uncomfortable already to get into that position if you've got a belly, right? If you've got a belly, it's going to sit between your legs. So it's already uncomfortable. Then you add a belt on top of that. 
Now it's mm -hmm. really uncomfortable. And again, most people who are bigger are going to be, you know, stronger. They've got muscle there. So they're no, they don't necessarily need that belt just yet. You know, it just, it doesn't, it's not going to work for them. There will be a time and a place for when that belt needs to go on. And when it goes on, we have to practice with it. And I like the soft belts to start with because they are four inch, but they squish, right? So there's come, there's give to them. So it's mm -hmm. good to get used to that, to have some give. Then the leather belt goes on and then you have to kind of work around that, figure out, you know, a little bit looser for the deadlift, a little bit tighter for the squat, you know, especially yeah. in the, to, to make sure that you're well, in a good position. And right there, I think, is the argument for the single prong belt as opposed yes. to the lever belt, Always. right? Because if you're going to buy one belt and yes. it's going to be the belt that you use for all yes. your lifts, yes. you can make that adjustment and make the belt a little bit looser for your deadlift yes. than it is for the squat without having to get out your screwdriver. So two belts that we recommend, two companies that we recommend here at 5 by 3 um, and... Um, no, we are not sponsored by them, and we do not have any affiliation with these, you know, <laughs> these companies. I get no kickbacks, although I wish I did because I, I sell their products a lot. Um, uh, best belt and Pioneer belt. Now, Diego will say right now, don't buy a best belt, only buy a Pioneer belt because Pioneer has developed a the Pioneer cut belt. So it's a single prong, three inch belt, but it has like two rows of holes, which is oh, ge yeah. genius. Because yeah, you're like, it's space. not too tight here, but it's too loose here. I wish I had another damn hole. Well, yeah. they solved that problem for you. So Diego's like, that's brilliant. Why didn't everybody else think of that? Except mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to find to get their belts, right? Because I, it's like okay. the only things available right now are the smalls. So, so, but I would say also the other consideration is if a person has aspirations for competing, you want to make sure that the belt that you buy is yes. approved yes. by whatever. You need um, an approved belt. You need an approved belt if yeah. you want a power lift. Yeah. So, um, Inzer, Inzer makes a good belt. Inzer makes lever belts. That's what I have. I have an Inzer lever belt, but we definitely usually tell people best belts or pioneer belts. I have a best belt, best belt is a three inch single prong leather belt. They have a variety of other belts, but that's the one that we always kind of send people to. Um, whether it's a 10 millimeter or a 13 millimeter is the thickness. Um, usually we go with the 10, the 10 millimeter. So you wanna just get a simple belt that is going to be very useful for you for all of your lifts. And I think you can't go wrong with a three inch single prong belt from either and then if you find you've been lifting for years and you love it and you want to get a belt that's more special yeah. especially designed or accommodated for a particular also lift. i think when we bought the inzer belts because diego has a lever belt too there wasn't there weren't too many choices back then i mean we were talking about 2010 2011 there weren't that many choices i mean rogue was just kind of getting started so now you have a lot more choices a lot more availability um there's a lot more out there uh, so, but we find those are the, the, the two belts that we, and we like to re recommend to people. And we have quite a few best belts in the gym that, that are either, you know, people have left or given to us or they're, you know, and, and can be loners for people to and, try and, just, and then eventually get their own belt. Background. That is the name of the family. Best. Best. B-E-S-T. Yeah. Best. The family that, that makes them is yes. best. Right? Bestbelt.net. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to like you're you're not necessarily saying this is the best belt no ever. it's best oh, belt dot net and then it's pioneer yeah. belt and they're <laughs> they are general leather craft so if you yeah. want to check those two out so, so i the, would say yes. belt belt mm -hmm. as number two but mm -hmm. i would also put next to that depending mm -hmm. on the person mm -hmm. either the same time or even sometimes even a little sooner might be um like knee sleeves okay right yes. like because i work with a lot of older clients and they've got creaky achy mm -hmm. knees mm -hmm. um and so sometimes the knee sleeves are helpful um and might be something that they purchase at about the same time as the belt or if the knees are creaky and um, osteoarthritic, right? Right. Else. right. That yes. might yeah. even be something that they purchase at the same yeah. time. So knee Jeez. sleeves, knee sleeves are interesting because it's true. Like there are plenty of people who need them early on. I've got people in my thirties. I've got clients who are thirties and they have, they wear knee sleeves and they've been wearing mm -hmm. them for forever. Um, and then I've got older clients. I have a, I have a, you know, a client, uh, Martha, who was on our, you know, podcast, um, a while mm -hmm. back. She's a, she was a runner. Her knees are absolutely great. Fantastic. Yeah, okay, that Amazing. surprises me. Unbelievable. But I think it's like her bone structure, she is, must her be. skeletal structure is good for running her knees, as opposed yeah. to mine. <laughs> her knees are fantastic. My mom's knees are fantastic. My mom's going to be 73 this year. She's Her mm -hmm. knees are fantastic. Deb, I mean, I've got quite a few 
um, clients who don't wear knee sleeves. And then I have others who wear the knee sleeves because they've had knee problems or they have, they had knee surgeries. Um, and then I have, you know, but I have a number of younger clients who have been wearing them from the beginning. Their knees, you know, are kind of creaky. Knees are just creaky in general. We're made all wrong. We have these heavy, mu big muscles up here. And then we have these like little muscles right here, the knee joints. So they get pissed off really quickly <laughs> if we give them, you know, if we, if we, if we, if we give them enough, uh, you know, fire to do, to get irritated. Um, but not all knee sleeves are made or created equal. So you have to be mindful of that, right? Don't buy the cheapo knee sleeves. Cheapo knee sleeves are that are just that cheap. They're not going to give you any protection. So just because they're 20 bucks and you're like, oh, they're 20 bucks. Yeah, they're going to last a week and they're going to realize I need to spend my money. Spend <laughs> your money. Um, I, I like to refer people to reband first, yeah. which you have to be mindful of because it comes one sleeve. So you have to make sure you say two sleeves or else you're going to get just one sleeve when you, when you order them. And then you've got to choose which is your favorite knee. Yes. Um, they're, a good quality. <laughs> they're a good quality knee sleeve. And then of course, just like with the belt, right? You can start with the rebands. You can start with the soft belt. Then you want to upgrade. If you upgrade, you upgrade to the SBDs and the SBDs knee sleeves. You'll never need another pair of knee sleeves ever, 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 ever again in your life. <laughs> Those are like the heavy duty knee sleeves, but they're lovely. It's like a little bit of love, both of them, reband or SBD on, you know, on your knees. Um, so yes, that would be, I would say, yes, that might be a second, third kind of. Yeah. Accessory. I mean, that's like where that falls, where the mm -hmm. knee sleeves fall in terms of purchases, I think yes. is individual. It depends on the person. It yes. Depends on what, yeah. Yes. And make sure that you're, you know, you have the correct size, just like the belt, make sure you size yourself correctly. Don't go by, well, that belt fit me. So I'll just, you know, buy that belt, mm -mm. measure yourself properly, measure yourself. Cause then you end up with like buying too small of a belt or too big of a belt. Then you got to sell the belt and get another belt. But there's always someone who's, you know, looking, looking for one. So it's easy, but same with the, well, if you need um, a smaller sleeves. belt, you could always punch new holes there. You can do that too. Yes. You can always go and punch, get holes punched. Um, mm -hmm. but measure your knees as well. Just make sure you're always making sure that you've, you know, you read the instructions correctly. Take, take time, take time to buy your, your purchases. Um, that's number three. So number four on your list of what someone might want to utilize in the gym after some time i have it i know what i i know what i was saying yeah i have a feeling i know what you're gonna say mm -hmm. um i don't wear you, them are you gonna say wrist straps mm -hmm. what are you gonna, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i've had one client who i think just one client who had wrist straps um yeah so I would actually maybe, I mean, like maybe this is anathema, like mm -hmm. blasphemy, something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But like, I might also, uh, like tied with wrist straps, yeah. might also say straps. Absolutely. For lifting. Absolutely. And, um, and, and that's just based on my own experience, probably mostly, but like you get to a point where your deadlift is sufficiently heavy and your grip strength is built on your heavy lift day, your yep. heavy deadlift day. Yep. And then you've got like a volume lift day and mm -hmm. it's just like, it's nice to mm -hmm. have a little break. Yep. Yeah. We <laughs> talked about straps um, when we talked about grip our podcast on, on grip, but we didn't necessarily, we talked in, in, in terms of, yeah, the, that when your grip goes, how do you, you know, adjusting your grip for the various lifts, um, and using straps for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then not all straps are created equal, <laughs> right? Diego is very particular about the kind of straps he likes to use. Um, and, um, I, I have a very, I have a love hate relationship with straps. Um, I, don't like using them only because I don't know how to use them. I'm being very honest and open up up here that this, yeah, I'm a coach and I'm a lifter and I do not like to use straps because I have a hard time with them. I just don't practice enough with them because I don't like to practice with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, they just bother me and they bother me. And here's the reason they bother me. They bother me because I have a very specific way of getting set up in the deadlift. I have a very specific way of getting uh -huh. set up in all my lifts. And it takes that out. I'm, I am, if I'm fidgeting, fidgeting around there at the bottom with my damn straps, I am yeah. not sitting myself up properly for the deadlift. And that is a problem for me. And I, I'm, maybe that's as a dancer. I have, little, <laughs> I have technique issues here. 
but you're, you're not particular at all. Craig was <laughs> Craig was saying that to me yesterday. He goes, Emily, you got to learn how to use those damn straps. I'm like, I know I do, but I hate them. I don't like the way that makes me sit. Yeah, up I'm like it. on the total opposite end of the spectrum from you at this point. Like I, I'm not competing any at you know. I don't really envision myself doing that right. any times. I've pretty much switched over to straps Stops. all the time. Yeah, yeah. My grip is getting terrible, right? Like, so, so, so there's that. But like my right hand grip has always been weaker than my left hand grip anyway. It's just, yeah. it's depressing. I just, I, mean, I, hope, do it I hope right. But it does totally mess up. Like it totally changes your yes, setup. Yes, Um. And, and I mean, the first time I used straps, I got so in my head about getting them on and getting set up that I actually didn't even notice that I didn't have my belt on. Do you remember this? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and so I got all set up yep. for, and it was like a fairly heavy deadlift and I was fine on the first two reps. And then the third rep, I was like, shit, I don't have my belt on. And your brain is, <laughs> yeah. And then as soon as I had that realization, I was like, oh yeah, and I'm pretty sure my back hurts. <laughs> yeah. I watched, uh, and we'll get back to wrist wraps. Don't worry. We haven't, we haven't forgotten about wrist wraps, but, um, but I watched, I watched Craig showing uh, Gretchen yesterday how to, how to use figure eights. And she says, what do I do? He goes, what do you mean? What do you do? Put them on like this. She goes like, what? He goes like this. He says, you have a PhD in math. What do you mean you can't put on <laughs> or a PhD in economics or something? What do you mean you can't, you can't put on straps? I'm like, I don't know how to use straps. I don't know to, and she's like, how do I put them on? I don't know how to use these. But figure eights, figure eights are like basically, you know, a no brainer like, and you're not even holding on to the bar. You know, I mean, you're still on the bar, but Diego mm -hmm. likes those specifically. He likes also the wrist, the, uh, the straps that have just like the single, the single strap where you just slide your hands through, grab the bar and then slip the little strap through. Yeah. I like, I actually like the, the ones that kind of wrap around multiple times. I enjoy, mm. I, I like those, but again, I'm not a big strap person, so I don't like them. I will hook grip the crap out of that bar before I put straps on my hand, my wrists. Um, yeah, I got like the second kind that you were describing with the little loop yeah, that goes around yeah. your wrist, which, yeah. I mean, I know I've seen some Ripito videos disparaging that kind of um, strap, but like it works for me, like the Harbinger, it's easy to use, yeah, it's exactly. easy for me to use, yes. it's easy for me to set up. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, I've, it's, I've not had any issues no. with my wrists as a result of you that. find you find you find what works for you and, and and what we'll do is we'll teach people how to hook grip we'll teach people how to mix grip and then we'll say okay if not if, if straps are, are easily available or easy to use for somebody straps if they're not going to compete yeah. anytime soon you know you rather don't as craig said don't miss your thumbs up i'm like my thumbs are fine i tape them you know they're yeah good to know. They're, I'm, I'm well not yeah i mean them. that's how it was when i was when i was doing um when I was competing and not using the, the straps, I had to tape my, like I had a whole elaborate oh, yeah. thing yeah. I would do with the tape yeah. and the chalk. And yeah, the so, business, so you but... could add athletic tape to your accessory list. Oh, yeah. If you're hook gripping, make sure you have some tape. So that, going back to- And maybe some new skin for, and maybe some new for skin. when your no. hook starts to make the inside of your thumb cry. My thumbs are fine. My <laughs> my thumbs are absolutely fine. I, I'm hook, I hook grip my paws deadlifts. I hook grip my stiff leg deadlifts. I hook grip my heavy deadlifts. I hook grip, and I hook grip with the Ohio- Yeah, well, okay, but then along, oh. at that same time when you get in your, your, um, your athletic tape, then you also get your callus shaver. <laughs> I, well, the callus shavers for my calluses, that's because I use the the power bar. Tom and I both look for that Oh, you bar. just, you just like, Emily. What? You just go up to the power bar and <laughs> to get yeah. to deal with your cat. No, okay. no, 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 not, no, I don't do that. I get, I get them from the power bar. I don't do that. No, I either oh, have a shaver I thought you were saying you're using the mouth. power bar as no, like an no. emery board. <laughs> no, but that's, that's how I have an even better grip is that power bar. So, but wrist wraps, why would someone want to use wrist wraps? So I, I don't use wrist wraps, um, with my own training, but, um, wrist wraps for people, for individuals who, um, or, ha or, or squatting, let's say they're squatting with their thumbs around the bar. So their wrist is a little bit more bent back than a thumbs over bar where you have a more neutral wrist. Um, even if you're holding the bar in on your back, even if it's the tightest position and it's not, it's not uh, rolling in your, in your wrist, your hand so much. Some people just really appreciate having a, a firmer, uh, you know, a tighter wrist and want to protect themselves a little bit more. So there's nothing wrong with wearing wrist wraps. If you're squatting with the thumbs around and you want to, you know, you just want to protect that wrist from, uh, 
from any any sort of of, uh, of injury um, if you've maybe had that in the in the past. Um, mm-hmm. Pressing. Some people will wear them when they're pressing. Again, they're having some problems where they keep the bar kind of rolls around a bit, even though they're trying their darndest not to. One of my guys just tried wrist wraps the other day for, as the press was getting heavier for him. Made a big difference for him. Um, some of my women have always will wrap their wrists when they press. I think Kelly uses wrist wraps when she's pressing and benching too. So it's support. It's just like knee sleeves. It's support for your wrist. Yeah. Um, that's a that is a very very individual, um, uh, you know, piece of accessory to use. Um, and the person usually is just has been using them from the beginning. And it works for them or they choose to they're having some issues with their wrists we try the wrist wrap and that seems to kind of take away any issues that they were they were having um elbow sleeves i'm going to throw in elbow sleeves there uh, elbow yeah. sleeves might be good useful for somebody especially if they're doing strong man so strong man and strong woman wrist wraps elbow sleeves knee sleeves those are going to be kind of essential because you're picking up really awkward objects putting your body into weird positions that's not normally they're not normally in um so those accessories are definitely going to be needed for that type of uh, training. But um, an elbow sleeve might be good for somebody who's just having some kind of weird elbow discomfort. Um, And we don't know the reason why. One of my ladies actually has a, she gets a little bit of nerve tingling in what just one arm when she's pressing. So she'll wear the the, uh, the knees, the uh, elbow sleeve, takes it away immediately. It's just a little bit of compression. It's compression, it's just compression. And it's only pressing, it's only on that one side. So we discover that by trying the elbow sleeve. Um, uh, if someone's having, usually if their elbows, if they're having elbow issues, if they have, you know, have some irritation, in the elbow, possibly from the shoulder. One of my older clients likes to wear, el- wear elbow sleeves when he benches. Again, yeah. compression, a little extra compression, just like knee sleeves. Um, you're not going to see that too often in the gym if you're just kind of dra- training regularly, but possibly if the person has had a, um, just a slight, a slight tweak or slight injury and is able to continue to bench or press, but just needs a little extra support. I tried elbow sleeves once when my elbows were bothering me. And um, once they stopped, I stopped using the elbow sleeves. I didn't need them anymore. So I might want to throw, I'll throw that in. That is kind of like at the bottom end of your accessory. That is definitely not one that is needed by most people. Right. Um, unless they're doing any kind of competition or else they're moving a lot of heavy weight on a lot of times. And eventually there will be some stress on the joints. And that little bit of compression t- helps to relieve that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess I just, I guess like in life in general, people are probably using their knees more than their elbows. Absolutely. So yeah. like yeah. Yeah. you encounter people earlier on who, who might have an issue right. that um, sort of calls for a knee sleeve. Right. Whereas the elbow sleeve is just because of general usage patterns yeah. in the world today, yeah. not, yeah. not yeah. something that is as frequently needed. No, I bought I bought mine when I was training last summer for the strong woman competition, and unfortunately they, they came later, so I couldn't use them for my my meet. But um, they came in handy afterwards when some there were some things that were um, kind of annoying me. And then also I had them for my client who needed them, and she again she only wears it when she presses. Um, but it, man, it took the it took away that 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 little irritation immediately, and her press is doing doing great. So. Um, I'm thinking that's really kind of covers it. I mean, really, because most people don't need too much equipment, but in general, shoes, a belt, uh, possibly straps and wrist wraps might be really, and, and of course, knee sleeves might be really it for, for most individuals who um, who are looking to get the most out of their training and and feel good. And, you know, knowing that you have the accessory, you have the equipment you need to go and do your your training just like you would do with any type of sport that you were um, serious about. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when, when to use them. And then of course the, how to use them, the plenty of videos that you can watch of how to put your knee sleeves on or how to put your belt on because knee sleeves can be tough. I mean, they're, you know, it took me about 10 minutes to put my SPD knee sleeves on once uh, <laughs> when I first got them. And I remember Pavi, when she got hers, I think it was like a half an hour of trying to <laughs> teach her how to put her knee sleeves on. They're quite tough. And you get, you learn the little tricks of the trade of how to put things on, you know, easily and quickly. Um, but you don't need too much gear, uh, you know, unless you get really, really serious down the road and you don't need to buy, buy a pair of really fancy lifting shoes. Um, they're not as inexpensive as they used to be. 
because nothing is as inexpensive as it used to be. But um, don't waste a lot of money, you know, on a fancy pair of shoes. Try to get something pretty standard. Eventually, maybe you want to upgrade to something if you want a different shoe or a different color. But a standard shoe, Adidas, you know, makes a great shoe. I think most people can get away with that. Dewin uh, shoes for those who have wider feet. Those are a good shoe to purchase. Um, other than that, Reeboks are kind of crappy. Um, Nikes are kind of expensive. So, you know. Yeah, I usually recommend those Adidas Power yeah. Lift. Yeah, Adidas um, Power Lift. I've, got, I've got wide feet, so, and those work yeah, well. Yeah, they work well. No, they do. They can. They can. Some people, though, have really wide feet, and the DeWins just make a huge difference. You know, and um, those you can find on the Rogue website or Penley makes Dewins, but D O W I N is the name of that. So, um, but I'm trying to think. I think that's pretty much kind of wraps it up and covers, um, you know, the accessories that are really needed for you um, as needed. Um, you don't need to run out and buy everything at once, it, it will come as you continue to train. And definitely always just, you know, check in with Vic. If you have a coach, talk to your coach, you know, just make sure that you, you know, ask, ask him or her, you know, for recommendations. But these are our recommendations as, uh, as coaches um, and what we um, typically see and what works the best for people. So yep. I think we can wrap it up there. Um, thanks for, yep. yeah, thanks for spending some time with us today here at uh, 5 by 3 Radio as Always, you can reach either Rebecca or I um, via email. Rebecca is at Cornerstone Strength Maryland at gmail.com. And I am at Emily at 5 by 3com We have in our, um, uh, you know, in our bio and our listing, um, the Charm City Strongwoman Contest thread. So we've got the post, the blog post about the contest. We also have my fundraising page is up now. We're also running a t-shirt nice. campaign. So if you'd like to purchase a Charm City Strongwoman t-shirt and help the cause, you can do that as well. And there's also a link about the Almond House, uh, too. You can read more about the Almond House. And if you'd like to direct, donate directly to the Almond House, you can do that as well. But all the money that we collect through Charm City Strong Woman is donated to, to Almond. So just know it all it goes to, to Almond directly. Um, and yeah, just you know, kind of follow, keep following us and checking us out and see if we can hit that $20,000 mark, which I know we will. Um, and our 11th year of the contest. So thanks again for joining us today. We uh, look forward to coming back in a couple weeks for our next uh, next podcast. And um, again, any questions or concerns or comments you have, feel free to get in touch with us. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to 5 by 3 Radio with Emily and Rebecca. If you like our show and want to know more about 5 by 3 Training, please visit us at www.5, that's F-I-V-E, the letter X, the number three, dot com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. To learn more about Rebecca, please visit her website, cornerstonestrengthmaryland.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week.